23 says, the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin, your the result of sin, the practice of sin, is death. So there are going to be consequences to your actions. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, let's look at one more verse concerning this, and then I get into the message. Uh, turn with me to Jude. Jude. The book of Jude, only one chapter. Jude is just before uh, Revelation. Jude. Now I'm going to show you what Jude said about people that's teaching grace as being an avenue of doing anything you want. Okay? See, I'm telling you, if you're under grace, you're trying to do what God told you to do. Okay. And grace is access through faith. Mm -hmm. All right? Jude, and let's look at, uh, let's look at verse 4. Well, let's start at verse 2. You have it? Mm -hmm. Verse 3, Jude said, to love, while I was very diligent to write to you, Concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. So he said, I want to talk to you about our common salvation, but I found I need to talk to you about something else. You need to contend for the faith. You need to contend for the truth is what he's talking about. Verse 4, he says, For certain men have crept in unnoticed who long ago were marked out for for his condemnation, for, I mean, for this common condemnation, ungodly men, watch this, who turn the grace of our God into lewdness and deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. What is he saying? He's saying you've got people that, that have crept into the body of Christ teaching that grace, while you're under grace, you can live any kind of way you want. He says those people have turned grace into lewdness. Mm -hmm. He says, they, and, and at the same time, they are denying our Lord Jesus Christ. Grace is not an excuse to sin. Grace is your, is God's love for us when we sin. Amen? One more verse. I said I was going to do one more. Do one more. Turn to Romans right quick. You're going to sit on the passage, You know my spiritual yeah. father. I might have five or six for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> He said right there, so. Romans chapter 6. Uh, let's look at verse 14 and 15. Romans 6, 14 and 15. You have it? Amen. Yeah. It says, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not, for you are not under law, but under grace, right? So we say, look, I'm under grace. So I don't have to keep the commandments. I don't have to do anything because I have the grace of God. Wait a minute. something wrong with that now. Because like I said earlier, we, we done shunned away from the Ten Commandments, but those are God's moral laws. Mm -hmm. If I can do anything I want, then I can go out and kill because one of the commandments is that I should not kill. Mm -hmm. Another one is that I should not commit adultery. I can go speak with anybody I want. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? I can go out, I can go out and steal. <laughs> I better use that because I, I do want to wake up in the morning. <laughs> he held me up all night. Moving. I told you the story when we had an argument oh, one night. Oh, we had an argument one night. This was a long time ago. And when was that? Long time ago. Okay. And uh, <laughs> BC last week. BC before Christ. Oh, yeah. And I know about women because they go and they, they put bricks on the stove and they ain't getting ready to cook it. They ain't getting ready to throw it on you. You know, they hurt you. All right? Yeah. So every time she would move, move every time she would move, I wake up. Yeah. And when she come back, I'd be sitting on the side of the room. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to sleep. And I think she started messing with me. Because she would get, she got up about a hundred times. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to sit right there and watch it. So I don't want to upset her, okay? I know that's right. <laughs> but, listen, grace doesn't mean that we don't obey God's moral law. Okay? Now watch this. He said, we're, verse 14 says, we're not under the law, we're under grace. Look at verse 15. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? Then Paul said, certainly not. He asked his own first question. In verse 16, he tells us, Do you not know 
that to whom you present yourself slave to obey, you are that one slave whom you obey, mm -hmm. whether of leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness. Mm -hmm. What he's saying is if you start practicing sin, you become sin slave. Mm -hmm. And what is the end result of sin? It's going to be your end result too, whatever mm -hmm. that sin is. Mm -hmm. So grace is not an excuse to sin. Everybody understand this? Mm -hmm. so, when I'm, so, so when I'm talking about doing God's will, I'm talking about faith in action. Faith in action. Did I confuse you to put this or something? What I said. What I said. I don't know. I don't, I don't make that judgment. Oh. But I do believe this. I believe if you continue in sin, that it will pull you away from God. Mm -hmm. God won't turn away from you, but it'll cause you. Just look around. When, when even, even with uh, uh, people that's not really uh, uh, practicing it real hard, as soon as they mess up, the first thing they do is stop coming to church. Mm -hmm. yeah. First, the next thing they stop reading the Bible. You know what I mean? And sin is designed to pull you away from God. Mm -hmm. So I believe that a person can turn their back on God, but I don't believe God to turn their back on them. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And one, one evidence is Loretta's sister. She left Christianity and went to uh, Muslim, Islam. Mm -hmm. And she was with them to help her. Her husband was a pastor. And she left Christianity and, 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 and started worshiping Islam. But God's mercy, and she came back. Amen. Mm -hmm. Two weeks later, she died. Mm -hmm. See, that's the mercy of God. So I don't judge, you know what I mean? I, I will say fear to pull you away. The wages of sin is death. And it's not just talking about uh, physical death, spiritual separation. So my advice to you is don't miss it. Don't I'd rather I'd rather miss it on, 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 on the end of doing right because some people say what's supposed is not true. Well I'd rather miss it doing what's right than to miss it doing what's wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Now, 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 now. So we see here that he says that when we practice sin, we become slaves of sin. Uh, Jesus said in John 8.34, he that committed sin becomes a slave of sin. That word commit means to become devoted to. All right? All right. Now, so we're talking about doing God's will. And we're not talking about working for salvation. We're talking about faith in action. Are y'all okay with that message? Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, let's get to the message. That was just a sidetrack to kind of help me understand where we're going. <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> now, what I'm about to say does not apply to all. I'm not generalizing, okay? However, I do believe that what I'm about to say applies to a great number two. Many Christians believe that just hearing and knowing the Word of God is enough. Or is all it takes to get results from the Word of God. They think because they read the Bible, they know it, they follow some quote scriptures. Too. They think because they've heard it, that that's all it takes to get results. That's why when things don't happen, they get mad with God. That's why when they don't see the promises of God manifested, they say, well, this don't work. And the reason why it didn't work is because you didn't do what the Word says to Now, don't get me wrong, okay? Um, I'm not saying that we don't need to hear the Word. We need to hear the Word. I'm not saying that we don't need to uh, 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 speak the Word, even speaking the Word, okay? I'm not saying that we don't need to hear the word. I'm not saying that we don't need knowledge from the word. Because Romans 10, 17 says, Faith comes by hearing hearing by the word of God. Or that 4 6 says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So we need knowledge. But there's another, another ingredient. There's another uh, element that goes along with knowing and hearing. And that's doing. If you don't do the word, I don't care how much you know, you won't get results. What am I talking about doing? I'm not talking about trying to earn brownie points with God. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about acting on the Word of God. 
when you do the word by faith, one of the, I shared with you earlier, one of the principles of faith is speaking. So in, in situations where I need to speak, if I'm going to get results, I'll speak. Some situations I don't even need to speak. Some situations I need to act. I give you a good one. If, if the words say tithe, I don't need to speak about tithing. I need to tithe. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? So see, if I'm doing the word, I'm obeying the word. Not to be saved, I'm doing it because I'm saved and because I have benefits that God has left to me that are received through 